Hey guys, uh, welcome to Unbiased Rugby. Uh, so we're super uh, round ten Super Rugby uh, weekends done and dusted. It was quite a difficult weekend for predictions. I think I only got two two correct uh, uh, across the whole weekend. But looking at my my main pool, uh, I think the top person above me only had three correct. So yeah, it was a really really difficult. And I think I, I was looking at uh, driving more, and he was saying on Twitter that he only got one right. So very very difficult weekend to to predict. Uh, it's a very, very topsy-turvy season this year. Uh, but let me go through the scores. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, the first game of the weekend was the Lions, but I'll probably speak about that one last. Uh, so the Lions uh, beat the Chiefs at, in Hamilton, 23-17. Next game of the weekend, we had uh, the uh, Hurricanes, uh, well, the Sunwolves versus the Hurricanes. I thought the Sunwolves had a, an exceptionally good game. Uh, and But the Hurricanes, you know, you don't have, at the end of the day, you don't, you don't have to play well on the day but you still got to eke out a victory. So sometimes, you know, you get those ugly wins and an ugly win's an ugly win. You know, uh, we can say whatever we want to say about the game, but, you know, sometimes your players aren't firing on all cylinders. They're not all, all together there. And, you know, you just need one or two players to be off off the pace or just, just not 100% there and really can affect the team. But uh, the sign of a good team is that even when you're in those kind of situations, you can still pull out a victory. Uh, next game of the weekend... Uh, the Sharks versus the, the Reds. Uh, the, the Sharks went down 21-14 in Durban. Uh, completely against the grain this one. I, I predicted the Sharks would win this game quite comfortably considering how the Reds had played the week before. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I, there's not much I, more I can say about the Sharks. You know, we were, I was looking at Nick Mallett after the game and he was saying, you know, in Durban and that, in that time of year, you, you need to play territory. You can't play an open, expansive game. It's all about territory, playing on the opposition's half, feeding off their mistakes. Uh, and yeah, oh, I just, just, I just not not very happy with uh, the way the Sharks have been playing this season. Uh, exceptionally bad. Uh, it's two two victories, and, and now they've got. Uh, I think they're going on the road. But like uh, they were saying, you know, the Sharks generally travel quite well. The only South African side that actually can travel quite well. So yeah, I think they need to get away from home, sort out some stuff and, and just get back. Because, you know, they've got the pack, they've got the players, but yeah, I just, um, I, you know, I don't want to pick on players or anything like that, but uh, uh, I wasn't, I'm not a really big fan of Robert Dupree at the moment. I, I just don't think he has this, the right kind of game management at the moment. And they were saying that, you know, because I think he's been playing 50 weeks non-stop rugby and you just can't play that that amount of rugby week in week out you know so we've really got to look at this off season we know where the players go either go play in japan or go play in the northern hemisphere it's it doesn't seem to be uh, doesn't seem to be working uh, and we're the ones that uh, lose out because they'll have a little bit of a break between super rugby and then they'll go play uh, premiership or they'll go play one of those and then they come back to super rugby and they're just not the same players uh, so yeah, I, 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 for me, a sabbatical should be a sabbatical, and they should be left to go play overseas for like a year, go earn some really good money, and then come back. Uh, I think, I think that's the only way to have player management properly. For this, letting them go in the off season, it's just, it, it's just not very good for the players. But yet, yeah, another another loss for the Sharks. Congratulations to the Reds. Uh, next game of the weekend, uh, I actually thought the Blues would win this game. Uh, with the Highlanders versus the Blues. I really did think the Blues would win this game. Uh, they've been on an incredible run of form. But I just don't... I, I think they play really well against uh, some of the other sides, but I think they find it really difficult playing against the other New Zealand sides. I think the other New Zealand sides play uh, the same brand of rugby, just a little bit better. Uh, yeah, they were out-muscled at, at the front, which was quite quite strange. Uh, I, I wouldn't have thought that, especially with their front row that uh, the Blues have. Uh, still Rico Yani and uh, Akira Yani. They are just exceptionally good players. Uh, really, really, really good players. I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, Akira Yani is actually in the, the All Black fold. But yeah, incredible victory for the Highlanders. They desperately needed that victory. They have to turn their season around. They have to actually win their next three, four games to try to get back onto a roll. Uh, that New Zealand conference is so tight. Uh, the two top teams, you know, the the, uh, the Hurricanes and uh, the Crusaders have pulled away now completely and they're just fighting for that third spot. I think there's seven points between uh, 
the, the Hurricanes and uh, the Blues. There's 30, 34, there's 14 points between the, the Crusaders and the Blues, but they've got a game in hand. So, yeah, it's, it's just never ever going to get to the top uh, if, they, if they carry on playing this way. But, yeah, great game for the Highlanders. I'm really liking Shannon Frizzell. The more and more I see him playing, like I like Papa Lee and I like I like all these other loose forwards that come uh, that are coming through the fold. But Chen and Frizzell are just oh, he's just he's everywhere and just exceptionally over the game line. Good ball carrier, very intelligent, knows when to offload. You know, and the more and more I see him play, the more more impressed I am with the way that he plays. Uh, next game of the weekend. <laughs> Same here, I'd also predicted the Rebels to win. I thought they were in a great run of form, especially with all the rubbish that was happening with the Waratahs. I haven't personally watched this game, so but I have got it recorded. I've made a, I've decided to, you know, there's a real big thing in, in uh, Super Rugby, where I think the Australians watch mainly Australian teams play, and then we'll watch the New Zealand derbies. And South Africans just watch the South African teams play, and then <coughs> and we watch the New Zealand derbies. So we all end up watching the New Zealand derbies, but we don't don't tend to watch the other other conferences. And so I've recorded this game so I can actually start watching. And uh, I'm going to actually make a concerted effort to actually start watching uh, the Australian games uh, to, to give them the, the, the same kind of support that I give uh, the New Zealand side. Uh, because, look, let's be honest, uh, you know, the the, the best conference for the best attractive rugby is the New Zealand conference, uh, especially the derby games. But yeah, I really want to put in the same amount of effort to, into the other derby games because I, I like South African derbies and I, I really want to start watching uh, Australian rugby to see, to, to actually learn more about it as opposed to, it's just, they're just another, the other sides that make up the numbers. <clears throat> but yeah, great victory for the Waratahs, 23-20 at home. Uh, with all the rubbish that's happening uh, with Israel Folau, I think that's great that they've actually uh, pulled out a victory. But I'm going to watch the game later on this weekend, and then we can, and then I'll discuss it. Uh, last game of the weekend, we had uh, the Stormers versus the Brumbies, and uh, I watched some of this game. I, I don't know, uh, Finn. I'm sorry that uh, the team went down there, uh, but yeah, um, um, I, I just don't know. I, I really don't know about this the Stormers side. They they really are starting to to frustrate me a lot. That uh, as a as a as a bull supporter, traditionally you don't support the Stormers. You know that's like it's like against my religion. You know to go uh, to to support the Stormers, and uh, you can say the same with Western Province and the Blue Bulls. It's just they polar opposites of of the scale. And uh, but yeah, um, uh, they've got the players. They've got. The tight five, they've got loose four, uh, they've got Peter Steph and uh, Sia Khaleesi, and I just don't, they just don't seem to get it right, and and, and it's, it's a hell of a frustrating, and they just can't score tries. Uh, yes, they had that one game with, with the Rebels where they were scoring quite a lot of tries, but besides that game, I'm trying to think of a try scored by by the backs. You know, uh, it's, it's mainly from a driving mall. You know, so, yeah, oh, I'm... I'm Something's wrong, and I, I think they need to pull off the Band-Aid sooner rather than later and change the management. Uh, Robbie Fleck knows he's going. He's got one foot in the door, one foot out the door. And, yeah, so, yeah, I think it's time We'd rather promote an assistant coach or something like that because at least there's there's somebody that's got a bit more uh, impetus into the game. But, yeah, I, I have not been impressed. They haven't travelled well, and now they're not winning at home. Uh, and they have to win. You know, there was a great opportunity this weekend for the South African teams to obviously move up the, the African Conference, and none of them have. Uh, so none of them are uh, uh, taking on the Bulls, and the Bulls have a game in hand. But let me get back to the top game of this weekend. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I didn't watch it live because uh, I watched the beginning of the game live, and then I saw, I saw the Lions go race on ahead, and I thought, oh, here we go. You know, they're going to throw it away in the end. But no, I, I was hell of impressed. I watched the game again last night. And uh, you can see what the Lions have been missing for the last couple of weeks. And that's been leadership. Uh, Warren Whiteley, you notice when you watch that game and you see when they were running onto the field, he had a smile on his face. And I, I watched some games. I watched uh, Kieran Reid uh, play at Newlands. And he runs onto the field and he was so happy. He was because it was, cause it was just he was just so excited to actually play the game. And I, the same feeling you have, you get with Warren Whiteley when you when you watch him play. He's always smiling. He's always got he's always got the guys back. He's always chatting to the guys. He's always talking to the ref. 
and he doesn't, and he's got a way of talking to the ref that's not confrontational. Uh, I've seen him speak to French refs, and and you know he, he's got a way of getting them on his side, and that's the sign of a, of a true leader. And the the Lions desperately need him, and they need him for the next four or five games to be uninjured. Uh, they've got a really big game next week against uh, Crusaders. Uh, I don't see them winning that game, but uh, you know, going up against the Crusaders, which they haven't beaten in the last couple of years, we know because of the finals. Uh, if they can be within seven points and get a bonus point out of the game, I'd say that is an absolute victory for for the for the Lions. But yeah, the, look, the Waratahs did it this year. No saying that the Lions can't do it. Uh, but yeah, I thought uh, Warren Whiteley had an exceptional game, and that leadership void now has been completely filled. Uh, looking at uh, Elton Yankees play, playing at uh, uh, second five, it is second five, or, or, or number 12. It was quite strange to see him playing there, but uh, you know, I thought he, he actually had a really good game playing there when he was playing in that position. I just thought he just he played played very similar to like Andre Pollard. He was really in their face. He made really good decisions. He had really good time to actually make his decisions. Maybe having that second playmaker in that position is actually – a good thing for the Lions. Uh, Saadi, the number three for the Lions, what an exceptional, exceptional prop. And just think, you know, he came from the Stormers and he was behind uh, Franz Malherber and Vilkalo, so he's never going to get to start. Now he's been put into another uh, franchise and look how well he's doing now. But yeah, great victory for, for uh, the Lions. Uh, the Chiefs, just like New Zealand, are not the same side without Brady Retallick. Uh, he, he just has that Gravitas, you know, that uh, he just has a way of getting people around him to uh, to perform because he performs really well. Uh, they missing Damon McKenzie, <coughs> missing that playmaker. is the only real exceptional back that they have. Well, they have good backs, but you know, it's only ALB, Antonina Brown, who's, uh, who's I'd say, is still is world class. Uh, and Damon McKenzie was world class, Brady Rattay world class, and they've got other good players, but. Uh, yeah, I just thought the Lions, the Lions, I played them and they out defended. They really had exceptional defense for 70, 80% of that game. And I was looking looking at it and I was like, the Lions would get into the 22, three, four minutes that score. And at that one point, I think it took 10 minutes uh, for the while the Chiefs were in uh, the Lions 22 to score. And that's what you want to do. You know, it's, it's eventually you can't keep the tide away for as long as possible. You can defend and you can defend and defend. But uh, eventually the players are going to get through. And, uh, yeah, but it's just to try to keep them out for as long as possible. Uh, and that's that's the main thing. And and they did 10 minutes and then, then only the Chiefs scored. Yeah, then they leaked one or two very, very soft uh, moments. But, yeah, exceptionally good game for the Lions. Great to see the Lions back. Uh, uh, playing the kind of rugby that we expect them to play. You know, we expect them to be one of the top teams to play. And in that defence was immense uh, and, and that's what we want to see we know that they know how to attack we know, know they play wide expansive rugby but when they start defending and they got their maul is set properly that is a, an exceptionally good side but listen guys what did you think of the weekend how did your super brew uh, results go because mine was pathetic uh, I didn't drop any places I'm still in third place in my main pool so yeah it wasn't, wasn't too bad uh, but yeah, who the hell knows what's happening in Super Rugby this year? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the uh, the standings quickly. And as you know, I like to look at the standings. I, I don't have the standings in one big list here in front of me. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to – actually, I can go hit the full table. Should I go hit the full table here? Let me hit it. Let me just see if it changes quick enough. There we go. Okay. So uh, – if we look at the Australian Conference, obviously the Rebels are at top of Waratahs just behind them on 24 and 20 points. Uh, yeah, so I, I still think, uh, look, it's, uh, but the Reds, Waratahs, Brumbies and Red, uh, no, sorry, the Rebels, Waratahs, Brumbies and Reds, there's only six points between the top and the bottom spot. So yeah, it's becoming another really tight conference. Uh, still 50% win ratio for the top teams, uh, which is... Like nine five eight four nine four, so yeah, 40, 40 to sixty percent, depending on on which side of the scale. But yeah, uh, the Rebels deserve their top spot, but the other teams are catching up hell of a quickly. Uh, Waratahs have, might have a, uh, might be able to take the top spot this this coming weekend. New Zealand Conference, okay, let's Crusaders. 
way up there, uh, 34, uh, 34 points. They've got a game in hand. Uh, so yeah, they are they are sitting at like maybe a 90% win ratio, exception you could say. I'm sorry, you know, that's Hurricanes just behind them on 27. Uh, but they won game ahead. Uh, Blues on 20. So yeah, I think uh, everyone's going for their third spot. Uh, because yeah, I, I still think the the Hurricanes and the Crusaders are the two top teams in that that conference. Uh, SA conference, uh, you know, the Sharks and the, the Stormers didn't do themselves any favors this this weekend. They really could have uh, taken the top of the the, the log. But yeah, we've got still got the Bulls on top of twenty three, and then the Stormers at the bottom of nineteen. So literally four points separate the top and the bottom. That is that's a game. So if the Stormers win next week and none of the other teams win, then they take the top spot. It's it's a really tight conference. Uh, but if we looked at this this overall, we've got uh, uh, Crusaders first, then Hurricanes. Uh, I just want to see the difference in the uh, then the Rebels, uh, then the Bulls. Uh, Marachi is the Bulls, uh, then the Sharks, and then it looks like the Waratahs, uh, and then the Blues. Now I'm just working on pre uh, 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 differences, uh, uh, point differences. But yeah, if I look at this. I think it's an exceptionally excellent season of Super Rugby. Who the hell knows what's going to happen week on week? Uh, you know, for, for years we've been watching and it's always been like, oh, the New Zealand sides are going to win, the New Zealand sides are going to win. And now for the first time, we've actually it's actually a little bit more a little bit more exciting because we don't know what the hell's going. Uh, African Conference, you can't buy consistency, uh, which is which is which is pretty bad. The Australian Conference has has improved astronomically, and yeah, that. Even 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 the New Zealand conference is like super tight, you know, like one or two games and, and the, the fortunes of these teams can change. Except for the Crusaders. They are they are they're a step above everybody. Uh, but listen guys, hope you guys had a wonderful Easter weekend. You know, it's my last day of my last public holiday, which is great. Nice thing is in the next couple of weeks we've got workers' day coming up soon. So I'm gonna take probably take off the Thursday and Friday and another great weekend. I think that might be the weekend. No, it won't be the weekend of uh, of, of uh, European Championship. But yeah, another great weekend of, of uh, Super Rugby. Listen, guys, I hope you have a great week. Chat soon. Cheers. Bye.